As for the wing, you need a piece of corrugated cardboard whose corrugations run spanwise, obviously. The next thing to do is to find the midpoint and mark out a simple wing shape. So there's my very basic wing to which we can add a tail fin and tail plane. And now for the fuselage, these bamboo sticks for grilling meat are very, very cheap. You get a hundred of them for a euro. They're going to form the basis of my fuselage. So I've got myself a flat surface, very flat, and drawn onto it a simple plan. While I'm waiting for the fuselage pieces to dry, I can set the wing dihedral. For that I use this thin card. First I'm going to place the wing on the card and cut out a small gusset that matches the profile of the wing. One for the top and one for the bottom. With the gusset pieces cut out and scored along the centre line to make bending easy, it's time to score the centre line of the main plane. This is done less aggressively than with the thinner card because this is actually, although it's known as corrugated cardboard, this is basically three layers of paper, the middle one of which is crinkly. And all I'm trying to do is crush those central crinkles. I don't want to break anything. I want to cut through the card. That's now floppy and would be useless as a wing if it weren't for the gussets. There'll eventually be three layers, two of thin card sandwiching the thicker one in the centre and all three will be innately quite weak and floppy. It's the fact that they're glued together in such a way that each surface is unable to slide past its neighbour that renders it stiff enough to hold the dihedral in flight. So now, centre that reasonably flex the wing. I'll use the same technique of thin card gussets to fix the tail fin to the tail plane nice and squarely. So here's my wing, loads of dihedral and the tail plane. I want to sort this out. There's a very untidy triple sandwich there, so what I'm going to do is get some strips of newspaper and just glue them over the leading and trailing edges. Here are the components I've ended up with there. We've got the wing, the tailplane assembly, and these two fuselage halves, top and bottom. So I'll show you how I'm going to put those together. When I fitted the wing gusset, I deliberately put it with the shiny side, which doesn't take this PVA glue particularly well, downwards, knowing that the huge surface area would make it all right. And then where I'm working on gluing much smaller surface areas to each other, that leaves me with the glue absorbent and glue friendly upper surface, the, the matte colored surface, to glue to. I'm just going to reinforce that with these pieces of PVA drenched newspaper. I've watered this PVA down slightly so it really has soaked into the paper. I've glued on the upper and lower trusses and now all I have to do is glue the tail pane in like this. This is where we're at. Things reinforced top and bottom and now we need something to protrude in front of the wing. So this toothpaste tube packet, toothpaste tube packet, has just been vaguely modified in such a way that it won't look too ridiculous sitting there. That's the hope. Because the wing has such a pronounced dihedral, I can't just glue it and rely on the very small contact patch that would be afforded by the bottom of this V. So I've glued two barbecue skewers to the rear part of my fuselage so that I'll get some more contact area when I come to fix them together. Two 
earlier flight attempts with a smaller rocket, mounted here, went quite badly on both occasions once the rocket lit the plane turned upside down and dived into the ground. So I've decided this time to mount my larger rocket in here, just underneath the wing, in the equivalent position but just on the underside of the wing rather than above. That's reasonably centrally mounted with just a tiny bit of down thrust. Success!